All right, is there any public comment on items not on the agenda? Right. Additions or changes to the agenda? All right, I spoke with Alfred and he didn't really have anything for today, so. Um, now we're meeting and greeting Ryan Edwards. Thank you for coming and thank you for volunteering. Yeah, I'm so welcome. excited to have a volunteer. Yeah, great, thank you. I'm excited to get out of the house. <laughs> <laughs> I work from home, so. Oh, wow. Oh, screaming kids, maybe? No, not yet. Oh, okay. But, yeah. That's in the, that's in the, the works. Yeah. yeah. Well, then we'll, then we'll be happy to appoint you to, you know, whatever. Right. Well, apparently planning also. <laughs> yeah, that's this first. Right. <laughs> so, um, everybody has had a chance to look at the resume, and welcome to Callis. Thank you. What made you pick Callis? Um, several things. I mean, my wife and I actually, we grew up in Morrisville, went to high school at Peels Academy. Um, I went to school in Boston, so I was down there for a while, then my wife went to nursing school down in Boston, so then we were both down there for a while. And anyways, we just moved back in the fall. Um, Had another Boston, did you? Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, I love Boston, but, uh, you know, we're from Vermont, so mm -hmm. at some point, you're ready to come home. And, right. Um, yeah. And we're from a small town, so, uh, you know, we were looking for a town that was, you know, kind of close to Montpelier, Barry area, because my, my wife is a registered nurse at um, Central Vermont Medical Center. Oh, okay. Uh, so this uh, shorter her commute a bit. We were living in Elmore when we moved back. And what's your wife's name? Uh, Amina. Yeah, A M I N A. -A oh, interesting. You've never heard that name. Yeah. If you saw her name, you might pronounce it Amina. A lot of people uh, know that. So uh, that'll happen. She's seen them all. No. So. <laughs> but. Well, I should have let us introduce ourselves. Go ahead. Uh, John Brayman, live up on the hill, Singleton Road. Okay. Denise Wheeler and I live over by Number Ten Pond. Okay. Cliff Emmons, I'm on the Cal Select Board. I live over on County Road. And I'm Rose Pelchuk. I live at the top of Lightning Ridge, opposite. The school is at the bottom, and I'm at the top. Okay. My husband's also the forest fire warden, so we have a sign at the end of the driveway. Okay. I just drove on Lightning Ridge the other day, so for so the he, first time. He, yeah. approved, he approves forest fire if you want to burn your forest. Right, exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he always. Right. It's pretty lean. Katie? I'm Katie Lane Carson, the recording secretary. Okay. Nice to meet you. I'm Jerome Lihani from Orca. Yeah. Okay. There's a, I'm not wrong. Um, you guys want to introduce yourselves? I already did it. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I'm Jen Myers. I'm in the corner. Hey, I'm Kimmy Bowen, and I'm going to have the GRB. Oh, hi. 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 Yeah. Hi. Okay. Hi. 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 Okay. So why did, why did you choose DRB? What's your... Um, so a little bit of background on myself is, um, previously, well, quite a while ago, I lived in Wilmington, Vermont, I was on the trails committee there. Um, I firmly believe in volunteering some time for the community. Um, now that my wife and I are permanently back in Vermont, that's something I can sort of do in earnest now. Um, and I felt the DRB and the DAB were most appropriate. Um, I'm a licensed architect. Um, familiar with, you know, building codes, energy codes in the state of Vermont. Right. Um, slowly getting through the town plan uh, <laughs> and the zoning regs, but... Um, very slowly, it's very long. Yeah, 175 pages, I yeah. think. Yeah. Um, no, I, I just felt, you know, they were the most applicable boards, and I mm -hmm. would have the most to contribute to those. Um, and then last but not least, I feel like my demographic's not really represented in town government. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, that's Perfect. the biggest. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> you need more of your demographics. So in 15 now. years. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> this is John McCullough. He's the chair of the DAB. Nice to meet you. How do you? So um, I've asked a couple of questions. I'll see if other board members have questions. And then. No, I looked at his resume. Looks good. Amazing. John or Peg or Jan? Two thumbs up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I do have a question. Two thumbs up. You do. Come to the DRB board and not hers. Yeah. Oh! <laughs> oh! I knew there'd be trouble. <laughs> so, Cliff, you had a question? Um, Ryan, you mentioned that you had uh, familiarized yourself somewhat, not completely, with the town plan and whatnot. You also mentioned um, 
you saw one of our challenges is that uh, you wanted to make sure that your demographic was represented. What other challenges do you imagine uh, we face? And um, what you familiarize yourself with, at least. Yeah, I mean, from a town plan perspective, or? Mm -hmm. um, <coughs> or anything else that's come to mind as you've researched and thrown your name in the hat, as it were. Yeah, I, I mean, Calus is one of these towns in Vermont, which is interesting because, um, you know, in some ways it, it is a veteran community, right? There aren't any large businesses here, so people are generally, they live here, they commute to Montpelier, they commute to Hardwick, Morrisville, wherever. Um, and, and I think it's, it's how you uh, try to encourage growth by getting people who want to perhaps start a business in a town like this or, or work here and stay here mm -hmm. um, as a way of generating you know, tax revenue and whatnot. Um, and I think there are opportunities within the village districts in Calus where you know, there are opportunities to do that. Even in uh, little old East Calus where, where I'm living. Mm -hmm. You know, it's Vermont, so you know things take time, and I think you know the town plan is the right step where you kind of just have to put the um, kind of have a plan laid out such that you can sort of start tackling individual items piece by piece, and it, it might take you know five years, it might take twenty years to to realize some of these these large goals. But um, I think the the overarching thing is just how is just how Callis is a, a community where. You know, there aren't a lot of, there's not a lot of business here and stuff, so okay. growing that a bit. Now, when you, you re, did you review the zoning regs? Uh, I, I mean, I have gone through them. Um, they don't differ significantly from most small town zoning regs in the state of Vermont. Um, but, yeah, so they've be, be, been becoming familiar with them. But, I mean, as an architect, I'm used to, you know, reviewing things as necessary and, yeah. and adept at doing so. Very good. Okay, John. John, how often the DAB DAB meets? What probably maybe once or twice a year at the most? Maybe they met three times this year. I don't expect them to meet again. Um, no, we don't meet very often. Yeah. Yeah, that's what Bar uh, Judy and Barbara were telling. Yeah. Me. <laughs> but, <laughs> so that's an easy <laughs> job. Right. Um, They're like, you can be on all kinds of committees. Yeah. yeah, yeah right. like, and uh, if there's anything weird about being on DRB and DAB, is uh, the DAB makes a recommendation to the DRB. Um, right. And so I don't know how that works out if you have to recuse yourself right, 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 from one or the other. So, yeah, yeah. Like that. So, yeah. Okay. Well, we, um, we have some interesting things that pop up. Yeah. Um, not so much anymore. We used to be at least one or um, one time a month that we'd be meeting, but we're waiting until people do something. The last one we did was the town hall, which is over here. Yeah. And um, they still got finished. Yeah. What they started, but um, we pretty much have sometimes in the summertime. It's it's stuff that's within the shoreland. Yeah. And in the winter time, it can be almost anything. And, but people are not putting in their applications as much as they were before. I think money is a tight budget all of a sudden. Right, right. Strange right. reason this year. Where, um, but we haven't had any problems. There's uh, four of us that are been on the DRB board for quite a long time. Okay. And uh, and we have one new man who's just joined us this year too. So. Oh, great. Okay. Cool. Great. And it's nice to have younger people that are interested in yeah. mm -hmm. coming onto the board. No, there, there's definitely a lack of um, people my age. Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll make a motion. We're ready for a motion. Yeah, it would be 2022 for DRB. I make a motion to appoint Ryan Edwards to the Development Review Board for a three-year term that expires in 2022. Mm -hmm. I'll second that. All right, any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed, hearing none. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> now the DAB. John, the DAB terms, are they for a year or are they just like forever? I don't know. <laughs> because it doesn't say I was so appointed by the selection. Sure. <laughs> I can I can yeah. look in my old records at home. Okay. Um, um, 
So I would make a motion to appoint Ryan Edwards to the DAB for a term to be determined. Uh, well, I am. Um, Does it say on the website? website? It's a four-year term. Four-year term. Oh, wow. There you go. So yeah. I would say 1920, 21, 22, 20, 2023. How many years did Ernie have left on his term? Well, his, his term was due to expire in 2023. Okay. Okay. Does anybody want to make a second? Second. second. Okay. All right. Uh, any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, motion carries. Don't worry, we're not going to forget your name. <laughs> your smart space. I'll learn all of yours. Eventually. Uh, eventually. It's right. in the book. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> did you get a town report from last year? I did not. I don't know, they if, have I don't know here. if there's any left. There's probably one yeah. sticking around here. Judy and Barbara gave me a lot of stuff. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure they did. They did, yeah. <laughs> I was here. They're like, oh. Uh, I was just registering to vote, so. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I almost was here for lunch, and then, you know, snowball. But. There you go. <laughs> Wonderful. Well, welcome to town, yeah. and we appreciate it. appreciate it. Yeah. And you're welcome to stay, or yeah. um, some people do, some people don't. Yeah. All right, so do we have, are you here just, John, just for DAB stuff? Yeah. Yep. And why do I recognize you? You sure? Ed. Ed Claudfelter, right? Mm -hmm. And you're here for? Why not? OK. <laughs> I just thought maybe you had a reason that we didn't have on the agenda that no, you wanted no, to bring no. up. No? OK. I think you could go something coming in Wyatt's and Hopla. OK. Um, East Montpelier Fire Department. Yeah, thanks, John. Thanks, John. Take care. Join us. Oh, hey. We're looking for younger demographics in the park. Hi, Ty. Well done. Yeah. Yeah. We'll look for your application soon. Yeah. My wife will be happy because I'll be out of the house. <laughs> it's a great bunch of people. They're looking for volunteers. <laughs> All right, so gentlemen, welcome. You are here to talk to us about an ambulance. Correct. And we have stuff in our folder, do we? Most important. There we go. So um, I'll go to back up a little bit before the price quote. So we had recently purchased the ambulance, the used ambulance from Williston for the, for the $20,000 with a $10,000 outfit cost. What's the name of that one? Is that, that will be Rescue 4. Rescue 4. That's replacing the other Ford. Yep. Um, that's a 2010 with 78,000 miles on it. That truck will be in service hopefully within the next week. Um, so in the process of looking at the sale values and finding a vendor to sell rescue for, um, Larry was able to come across an opportunity with this dealer to purchase. Can I start? So mm -hmm. the one that you were just talking about, the one that was for 20,000, that's mm -hmm. rescue what? That will be rescue for. So that's replacing rescue for and will be rescue, rescue for. Okay, gotcha, thank you. Mm -hmm. So this one would be the replacement for Rescue 3. Um, this one, with a proposal, we found a 2016 demo. It has 11,000 miles on it uh, for the cost of 175, which the new ambulances are going for starting cost of 225. And if you remember back in your capital plan, the capital plan reflected the replacement of um, Rescue four and rescue three both showing rescue three showed at 205 and rescue four showed at 225. This was, I should have had a copy of that sent to you. Well, um, I don't have a recent one that I asked okay. for, but um, so, this is. So rescue three was supposed to go in 2005 when you saw it, you're saying? No, it was supposed to be replaced in 2000. Um, we can make copies of that. It's 205,000. Okay. Rescue 3 was scheduled to replace 10 years actual, so it would be 2023. 
possibly, but we don't know. That was a used truck when we bought it. Yeah. Yeah, so it's not we, on this expected remaining life 10 years, it says. Yeah, so we just had an $8,000 repair we had to put into that truck for a regen system on there. Um, I spent about three weeks downtime up in... Okay, you have to tell us what that means. So the regen system is part of the exhaust system. On newer trucks work in different ways. This one has a system where it runs off a thermostat control that actually burns off the particulates that uh, build up in the diesel exhaust systems. The thermostat part of it, the best we can tell, had failed, not allowing it to get to the higher temperature it needs to to fully clean it out and things. So they had to replace several components of that system. So this is, I'm just looking at this, I think it's the same thing. Yes. Um, it says Rescue 2. Rescue 2 is different. Rescue 2 is the fire side. Rescue 2 is a heavy rescue for the fire. So rescue. Rescue three and four are your ambulances. Mm -hmm. Yeah, rescue four says FY twenty thirty thousand dollars. Right. So that one was just replaced with a used Williston ambulance. Right. So you keep that one. And if you right, and if you remember rescue four, we just put a fifteen thousand dollar motor into that truck last year. Right. All right. So we're looking to replace rescue three. Right. And you said that was 175,000. It's 175,000 for the demo model we found, um, versus a 225,000 cost for new replacement. Mm -hmm. Have you guys seen pictures? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, You're gonna pictures? have to paint it though, right? To match the. Um, we probably won't change colors onto it again. A lot of this stuff is all decals laid on. Oh, okay, just go. Cool. It's fine. Oh. Um, as part of the proposal with this, they're also providing the lettering, as you see on the, the slip up there, the, the value of the 5000 They're giving us, also the trade value they're giving us on the two trucks was 39000 The two trucks being? Right, the rescue three and four, so both used the ambulances. They actually flew oh, somebody in yesterday. I thought you were keeping rescue four. No, there, there will be a new rescue four. The Willis oh, and okay. is a new rescue for the old trucks that would be retired. Rescue three and rescue four. The old trucks. Will they're going to take. They're going to take both. They will, which is a really good deal to get the thirty nine thousand out of both of them. And they flew somebody in yesterday from Baltimore, and he looked at the trucks yesterday. Oh. And then they also have a contingency for a thousand dollars in there to fly us to Baltimore. Oh. Oh. So to drive it back. Yeah. I'm sure it's hidden in the price somewhere. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, much, I don't know if there's much hiding in that price at the 175. That's a really good deal. The truck has not been a service. It's just been a show truck for them. Um, floor hardware for stretcher striker antlers. Yeah, that's the anchoring system to an to anchor down the antlers. So one of the things we would forego, as you remember when we talked about the truck we bought from Williston, one of the, the new safety features or the loading features is a, these new loading systems. Again, it saves back injuries, but they're right. forty to $60,000. I was just going to ask and, that's included in this. Yeah. Uh, we would forego that as part of it because of the cost, because we feel the value of having a reliable truck mm -hmm. that's a new truck, it's full drive, um, is a better investment for us than... Mm -hmm. Maybe we could have a spaghetti supper and raise forty thousand dollars each spaghetti. So the total me and you, Albert. Anybody else want to see pictures? So the total price then would be trade in is one thirty six, not one seventy five. Right. Correct. And how much money is in the capital reserve for purposes? So in the capital reserve currently. There's over a hundred thousand dollars in there. However, we would not be looking to um, on the current asset sheet in your capital reserve is a hundred thousand eight hundred fifty-three eighty-one. So we would not be looking to obviously take it all in one payment and pay the truck. Um, we are speaking to North Country Credit Union, and they currently hold the loan. If you look at your long-term liabilities on your, your rescue pump reserve. Um, we have the 
We have a current note of 146,000 left on the rescue bumper. And that's a fire side? That's the fire side. So there's basically three years left on that note. And what we're proposing is that we would refinance that note to five years and we would finance this for five years, combining the two, um, for a total combined loan of 282,000. Higher interest rate. It's a 4.0 interest rate. What's the current interest rate on that? About the same. Oh, it is. Yeah. Um, and, and what that does over the five years that it takes your payments, our current payments are 53,000, uh, 896 a year annually. And then it would take it to 62.5 approximately for the new annual you know, payment. Like, okay, so you wouldn't have to pay it out all at once. So you'd right. be looking at 62.5 right now. There's 100 and. Right. So you're actually paying in arrears because you're going to be earning the ambulance revenues on the way that pay for the payments of the truck mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. going forward. So. This is ambulance equity, 32,000. I think that's your asset value into, I have to see that one sheet that's on top of that. Yeah, I think that's your asset value of the one, um, the one truck that's getting replaced. The truck and the, I mean the ambulance. Yeah, right? without, the, without the data sheet behind that number, I can't tell yeah. you specifically what that number is. But we're getting 40 for both trucks. So the other trucks are really only worth. Yeah, you're going to get 30, 19 for one and 20 for the other. But I thought the gas yes, value that was higher. I don't think that that's not reflecting the same conversation. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, what was I so all the costs will be re absorbed in the capital reserve fund. You're reading Bruce's note yeah. too? Yeah. I sent it around to everybody. No, no, no. It can be a loan. Right. Well, it's a, right, well that's why I'm asking, because this says all the, because I wanted to make sure that we weren't going to get hit up with another payment. And that's what I asked. So there's actually zero cost to the town, because this is all paid for by revenues drawn from the end loans. So the loan will be paid through the, um, Capital Reserve Fund? Right. Ambulance from, revenue. From, 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 from revenues, right. right. Just like Rescue 2 has been. Right. right. And the previous trucks. Yeah, it's too bad you guys can't get that power. The no. cotton looking stuff would be a lot better for you. It's more important and I keep an ambulance that doesn't have the lights go out on me when they're going down the so road. So those guys couldn't give you a deal that all the striker with laying around to could just <laughs> lay it around. Yeah, no, they don't just lay around. Right? <laughs> yeah. Are there no. any out there used or you have to buy yeah. a new one? Um, there are used ones. So strikers. But like some of the situation with used ones is striker will not stand behind them. Hmm. So they they in service them. They you know, because again it's some companies that have picked them up or taken them out of a truck. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Stryker got into some real hot water for some of their uh, life support system equipment and so yeah. everything they do is really scrutinized now, so right. that's why they won't support oh. any used gear. Oh, right. wow. How do you know all this stuff? I sell parts to Stryker. <laughs> oh. oh, that would be... See, he's one of the sub-vendors. <laughs> <laughs> they don't work Unfortunately, I don't supply parts that go into the list system, so I can't get to the... You say you have enough parts that we can... Right, you can make one. Right. Um, and then are you also... Do we have any fire engine replacement coming up that's going to also come out of the Capital Reserve Fund? Well, there is a uh, engine four is slated to be replaced. It's not its 25 year lifespan um, within 2020. So, are you going to be coming to the towns? Remind me how we do that. To the towns asking us for money to purchase a new fire truck? Well, we have to, I mean, that's a conversation we need to have going forward. You know, that truck again, it's out of its NFPA standard for, you know, lifespan of 25 years. Mm -hmm. We've had some minor issues with that in terms of frame and, and you know broken uh, mm -hmm. frame mounts and things like that that we yeah. fixed. I'm just thinking tax dollars. Mm -hmm. 
um, right. because that's what we have to do. So the last fire truck we've asked for out of tax dollars was engine two in 2002. All other apparatus and trucks since then have been 100% fully funded through the revenues earned from ambulance revenues. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right, anybody, other folks have questions? Anybody in the audience have a question? To me, it sounds um, like a, a good deal. It sounds like a really wise deal. I mean, to be able to get this ambulance at a lower cost, it's never had patience in it. You know, also I, unload the other ones. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's, that's a big deal. That's a big deal. That is a big yeah. deal. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So I'll read you the motion that Ms. Montpelier made. I move to authorize EMFD to commit up to 136000 plus associated loan costs from the EMFD Capital Reserve Fund to purchase a 2016 dental ambulance from FESCO Emergency Sales to replace Rescue 3, paying off the existing loan on Rescue 2 and consolidating loans for Rescue 2 and 3 into payments of approximately 62,500 62, annually for five years as requested. Is the total number though in there? The 176, I didn't hear that. Uh, the total so to commit up to 136,000. Okay, okay. It reflects the number after the after trade. Oh, right, right after the trade. That's after right. Trade. Okay. Okay, I'll, I'll move that motion. Okay, and I'll second it. Is there any further discussion or questions, comments? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none. Good work. Thank you. Yeah. Thank, thank you. Yes. Thank you. you. When do you think it will be here? Um, probably by the time we do the loan paperwork, I think it's probably going to be a couple weeks. Everything oh. would take. But. And you're pretty confident North Country will. We've already talked about it. Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. good. Great. So who's driving the two down to Baltimore? That's their problem. Yeah. You're going to. They're probably Greg. Greg. They'll, 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 they'll fly. Greg and Albert. Albert. Driving back. <laughs> Greg. <laughs> Greg and Albert. Yeah, well, thank you for. <laughs> yeah, we just, thank you. We just passed 600 incidents there this year so far. 600? 600 what? Yeah. Uh, we're at 602 oh. two rounds this year so far. Yeah, and it's only October. October, yeah, middle October. All right, well, thank you. Any other All right, thank you, folks, for all the work. Thank guys. you. Thank you so much. Is December, the first week of December, I think. The first, first, the first Thursday? I thought it was the I don't know, but we have it written down. We'll get it. I asked, I, I asked where I was like, you know, it's five times a year. What was our baby again? And I have mine in a plastic sleeve with big red on it. So that. Thanks, you guys. Good night. Thank you, Albert. Good night. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Okay. You say it's November 7th? December. Oh, I didn't print off December yet. All right. Onward. See you, woman. December, December 5th is the first Thursday. The 12th is the second Thursday. Mm -hmm. I know. I feel like the fifth. Yeah. I think so. I think it's the second Tuesday. It used to be the third, I think. But uh, okay. it's so, different. We okay. have it at home. All set? Mm -hmm. All right. So let's move on. Um, school bus tires. We had a joint meeting with, John and I were on by phone, Alfred was there in person, and I sent a follow-up email documenting what John, John and I recall as from the meeting. Um, I, did I send it to, yeah, I sent it to, I don't know if I sent it to everybody. Cool, I should have sent it to all of you. Um, anyways, basically, we've asked them to put it on there next meeting agenda to keep pushing away because guess what, snow will be here next month or the end of this month. So we would like them to make a decision um, and we haven't heard back on anything, have you? Anything more uh, than her? This is the Unified School Board? Yeah. We asked them to put this on their next agenda 
because we think it's really important that they get going on this. They said that they would get back to us by November 1st, so they've got a little bit of time. But I don't want to let this just kind of do nothing, have a do nothing thing. You want to add anything? Wait and see. Wait yes. and see. Um, UVM Capstone Roads Project. Um, Cliff and I and the office staff had a conference call with them last week on the 14th. Thursday. 13th, what is it? 14th? I don't know what day it was. Oh, the 11th, maybe? The 11th. The 11th. Yep. Um, just to check in. They like to do a monthly oh, check in. Sorry. Temp. Mm -hmm. um, and I included, I think the UV, the email is up on the, in the packet on the, online in the folder. Is it? Oh, let's see if I pull it up. But they came out and met with Alfred and the road crew. They sat in the trucks. They took, um, you know, a ride around mm -hmm. town. And um, they planned, I suggested that they really should come back at a time when they can actually ride in the trucks and see, you know, how different it is to be in the truck as compared to a vehicle when you're riding on these back roads. But um, they're working on our project. They're very excited about our project for some reason. And they think that whatever they do for us, they can replicate, replicate it for other towns. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. Yeah, small town, small budgets, you know, lots of dirt roads. Yes. Um, so, yeah, so they're working on it. They're really excited. Expect to hear from them, you know, in a couple of weeks. What was the thing that we talked to them about that they were going to you know, replicate with other towns? What was that? Well, the ro I think it's the rodeos and the like. Yeah, time. trying to try to develop a, a way that could be apples to apples comparison. Are you know one of the questions we were asking them to look into is: Are we sufficiently staffed? Mm -hmm. Are we sufficiently loading in advance enough additional resources, be it equipment, be it materials, for the makeup of roads we have. Now because all the towns are so different, it's very hard to create an apples to apples comparison. So they're going to see if they can find data points that could be manipulated benchmark. so that towns can benchmark against each other and learn and benefit from each other. They're also um, Going to be looking at if there are um, apps that are being used by other towns that we could utilize in, in our own highway uh, department or our planning for that matter. Mm -hmm. um, uh, a long look at our um, roads maintenance um, plan and whatnot, and if there's changes or updates that um, could possibly be discussed with the um, Roads Commission. So, um, and their next steps basically is they're going to start collecting uh, data and then develop uh, design ideas uh, along with um, alter alternate, alternative scenarios. So, if, um, if we do, the, you know, if they recommend a design, they say if you go down this path, this is what you could expect to achieve. If you don't go down this path, this is what's likely to happen so that we can oh, wow. see both sides. Yeah. of the um, proposals that they're bringing to us. And they've been given copies of all the minutes from the roads meetings we had last year, copies of our winter operations plan, the roads committee, road standards report, they have all that. Um, so, and as I, I pointed out, that I think it was Todd Eaton from VTrans that came to one of the meetings and said that the six hour rodeos are too long. Mm -hmm. So they're really taking a close look at that, which would affect staffing. So. Yeah, one of the other things um, with regards to that was looking at the origin points of the current routes that are established um, and the proximity of the garage, the start point, the end point. Mm -hmm. Can we avoid deadheading and what we right. can well, maximize right. our well, point? Right, one of the things was is could we, instead of ending 
further away from town garage, can we end closer to the town garage, which might mean changing the plow routes. Mm -hmm. exactly. So they were going to look at all of that as well. Yeah, I, yeah. It's interesting to think if it's done still the way it was done 30 or 40 or 50 years ago. You know, right. so this is great. To yeah. Yeah, yeah, we're really lucky we that Mac. I know. Kind of a great idea. Yeah. yeah, it was a great idea. Yeah. Who so would have ever thought it? Kind of where we're at with that. Um, I think that's it on that. Unless, you know, something, anything else? My notes pretty much summarized it. Yeah. yeah. Great. Let's talk about the budget process. Um, I sent out a note to all the chairs and vice chairs, letting them know that it's that time again. Put them all on notice, and I got a lot of I got a lot of positive feedback last year from the office staff and from the various people on the different boards and commissions about the way we, we way we handled the process, having them come in, you know, kind of give us an update on what they're doing and if they're going to do something that's going to cost money, to be thinking about how much that might cost, um, so on and so forth. So. We need to come up with a schedule, and we typically met like almost every Monday. So here's some thoughts we can do it that way. We can um, schedule like a budget retreat, collect all the data, and then pick a maybe a Saturday or a Sunday, whatever day, for the board to meet and hash it out and go through it until we get it done. Or we could meet at six o'clock, you know, an hour before a regularly scheduled board meeting. But I know sometimes I can I, only do that every other Monday. Right, but I don't. Right, and that was why I was going to try to catch up with you to see what your, um, like for instance, next Monday the twenty eighth. I have a hard enough time keeping up with my own schedule. So, are you? Do you work that day, the twenty eighth? Well, today's the fourteenth. Right. right, but it, so every other week, so the 28th, you would be available at 6? Yep. Okay. Yep. Yes, Madam Chair. <laughs> so formal. <laughs> so formal. But say, for instance, November 11th, does that get, that's in every other? Yep. You? <laughs> Rose, let go. Arl. 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 It's okay, good. and the 28th, go play first is? <laughs> The 25th? Yep. Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, wait, but are we definitely, can we go back to the options? Yeah, I was just trying to get in my head whether mm -hmm. something yeah, like that would on or work. Off. Mm -hmm. So those are a few options. Maybe other folks have other ideas, but I was just trying to think outside the box. I like one meeting. Mm -hmm. Go through and hash it out. Well, and get it done. No, I mean, I get it would be a day, but right. I'd rather do one day than in dribs and drabs. Okay. Yeah, because we also lost. I, I, we lost track of stuff. You know, I did. Yeah. Um, John, what do you think? Are you willing to devote a day? Uh, it depends what time of year. Well, it's going to be in. The, it's probably going to be in December. Deer season. No, December Deer season. works. Deer season. January legislative session is not going to work. We're gonna, not going to need downtime. We're going to have little bits of budget stuff that we have to do, you know, in between. But coming up with the final one that we want to print in the town report, you know, I could see that maybe even happening at the beginning of the town meeting is March third this year, so it's early. We have to get stuff to the printers like a month ahead of time. Um, I think it's going to be hard to do it all one day because you know we're going to. It's going to be like when you go to a job with all the parts mm -hmm. and tools, and you're like, you need this answer and this answer, and mm -hmm. Sandra's not going to be there necessarily. We can ask her either. Okay. We could, but she's there. But she has access every month to check. I, I'm just wondering. If, yeah. But we should we should shoot for that. And if we come up short, we might have to reconvene. Well, if we do it in December, Denise was sorry to say, oh, we could do it in January, and we could. We could. But then we're hitting up, well, we're hitting up John's schedule. We're, we're also going to kill a Saturday, 
because that's what we're thinking, right? Well, but like every other Monday, I'm off for the whole day. So we don't have to wait till 6 o'clock at night. Yeah, we could do it at so 4 or 5 or I don't know. I work for me, though. You're flexible. You're a little yeah, flexible. I'm yeah. flexible. So it sounds like what I'm hearing, and it may be that we need like two half days, because as you said, we might have stuff that we don't know an answer to. No, we better. could try to do it even on a Friday when the office is closed, but Sandra is here. And I'm off every other Friday. Uh, is it the? It's the Friday before the, that Monday. Before the Monday. Yep. So that could be a possibility to maybe shoot for that. Katie, what about your schedule? I can't work daytimes. I'm sorry. So we won't have anybody to take minutes or notes. Um, that might not be such a problem because Sandra will be here. Well, what if we did Friday? What if we, what, what, what is your daytime? And um, so in other words, when are, you, when are you available? So you're not available until What if we six. went five? Spot, so you're done at 5 so you wouldn't be able to get here until six. If we're talking about two days, I bet I, I can make like four o'clock work. Just, yeah, just so not regular. Do that at like four, but then. But then Sandra's really gets done at four unless we ask well, her to come in come late. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it's a Friday. She wouldn't be here, right? She's been working Fridays. Yeah. Don't forget, um, she's she's full time. She's yeah. full time now. Um, so if we don't have, because we're all going to turn to toast, turn in pumpkins, eat toast, whatever. If we spend too much time on it. No, no. no if we start too late. Right, like the right. energy and that's what, level is gonna sap. Right, we're gonna have less. Well, we could ask. Um, we could get sandwiches or something brought in. Jan, I'm trying to remember in your email to us. Did you give us a date when we have to have the monies back to you? No, not yet. That was just to give you the heads up that we're gonna be starting to work on budget and asking the different committees, boards, commissions to come in with their. All right, Request. so, but I'm hearing that you want to do this work in December. We better have our numbers done by the end of November. Is that what I'm hearing? So right, well, I couldn't tell you. Right, I we haven't got there yet. We haven't got that far yet. Well, okay. that's Until we have this discussion. Case, yes. I still like Friday. I like the idea of Friday afternoon. I realize we're compromising. Heavy. We could ask to, um, four to eight. Like four to eight? On a Friday, but that's only two hours. I mean, when you no, think four, four to eight, eight, four to eight is four hours. Oh well, I okay. So we do that twice, and we get right. But that's when you think about the time we're trying to make up. How many hours have we, do we spend on this? If well, we meet right. every, if we've been like last year, we met like almost every single Monday. Right. Starting, I think I remember like in October. Yeah. Was, right. That's why I'm. So so let's say we out. have eight to ten hours at least, right, 10 to 15 hours of budget process, mm -hmm. um, which includes hearing from everybody. Well, that's good. No, we're going to hear from them on our regularly scheduled meetings. Okay. So, because all right. that's easier, for, I think, for the other groups to come in. Okay. All right. So we're not... So we'll have all that information. Okay. We'll so we have... more efficient, too. Yeah, we'll be more efficient. We won't be, like, digging... Mm -hmm. re yeah. yeah. So let's say we have, all right, eight so, hours of process. Right, so we'd have like two Fridays where we would do four to eight. Four to eight. We can have sandwiches brought in, <coughs> you know, from Maple Corner or East Callis and make it a working thing. Mm -hmm. We have, you know, that's not. Are you up for that though? We're planning this mm -hmm. around you. <laughs> I am. Yeah. Okay. You right, have so a sandwich too. Yeah. <laughs> that's what we would do all right so that sounds good so now I know how to try to help set this up for everybody to make and, it work and now we're thinking I think it, well, December. In December we might have we might have to have one in December like in the middle of December I didn't bring December calendar huh? okay I know I can't do the six that's that Friday is not good for me but the others 12, 6 is a no for Yeah. It what would about be, you, Rose? For me, it would be either the 6th or the 20th. That you can't do? That I can do. Those are the two Fridays that I'm off. The 6th and the 20th. Even if, even if we go at 4, yeah, because you... It's, yeah, because I work till 6 or 6.30. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. Okay, and, what, and the other Friday is the 20th, and that's right before Christmas, 12, 20... Are you, four to eight, four to eight. 
four to eight. Yeah. You're right. You're okay with that, right? On the twentieth. Yeah. Sharon, I'm not excited about that. <laughs> December is well mm -hmm. between Thanksgiving and Christmas mm -hmm. gets crazy, right? Mm -hmm. A Friday night right what before the, Christmas. Um, what about the 13th? Something fun will be going on. Yeah, you know. What about December 13th? Rose can't come. Yeah, I can't get here till like 7. Okay. Or can we look at January? Yeah, January. Yeah, January. Friday, January 3rd and the 10th. I've got to break out my new camera. Hangover should be gone by the end. By the third? Yeah. Okay. You okay. Yeah, that's... Yeah, I'm getting wimpy in my old age. That's fine. So one, three, and but then one of ten of 2020. So Sharon did yes for both. Rose, which ones can you do? She could do the 20. What, what are we talking about Friday? January. January 3rd, 2020. 3rd, yes. 17. And 17. No, what about the 10th? You can't do the 10th, Rose, right? No. Not until 7 p.m. Okay, I'm just, because we're going to have to watch out and see what the, yeah, I could do the 31st. the printing. All right. Schedule. Well, what's wrong with the 3rd and the 17th? The 7th, because I'm thinking it might be 17, might be too late. Okay. Because, because oh. of the town oh. What if we do like Friday the 3rd and Saturday the 11th for in the morning? Yeah. 8 to eight to noon and Saturday the 11th. I'm not coming here at 8. Alright. Uh, whenever you want to come. 10 to 2. I can do 9. Okay. Alright, 9 to 1. Okay. Alright, wait a minute, wait a minute. We can't come at 8. She can't. Don't, yeah, it's not worth it. Not, not, yeah. You don't want to drag morning people out. Not yeah, nine, nine to one. Nine to one. Maybe yeah. we would be done by noon. Yeah. Rose, you're available on Saturday the eleventh. Cliff, you gotta find what on your face. I always make it work. Um, and I'll have to check with Judy and Sandra about the printing schedule because the eleventh might be pushing it. Too well, late. Uh, I'd like to throw this out there then. We can consider a Saturday, then we could also consider Saturdays in December. But that's right. That's, right. Right. that's what that's I'm right. thinking too. Yeah, no, that's fine. I like the, I like the Saturday morning generally better. Is that a Friday? Yes. Okay. So yeah. we would have, we can ask Sandra to if she doesn't have something or arranged. Or, mm -hmm. You can do Saturdays. Not the seventh. I organized wreath making. Okay. Not, I oh, can't yeah, do yeah. the seventh either. I can't do the seventh either. Yeah, well, at least we all can't do would, the same thing. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> what about Saturday the fourteenth? Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Okay, so a yes is all. And that's nine to one. That would be yeah. And and nine we're scratching one. whatever the Friday we were talking. Yeah, about. and you know it may be good to have that break, um, and do a, the next meeting in January because that will give everybody time to yeah. in the office to pull figures together right, that's right. and all that because right so and we'll be hearing about it as a Monday night thing right so what know, our regular meetings in between can you go to January again because I want to see what this what's the Saturday in January if we're looking at Saturdays now 11 um no we don't worry that was the fourth the fourth Saturday 1 4 20 20 Nine to one. Is everybody? Is that a good day? Not the fourth. I have to work. The eleventh. I'm on. Jeez, do you you yeah. work your butt off. Uh -huh. I work every other weekend. So when I work the weekend, I have Friday and oh. Monday off. That means we're not going to be able to do a week apart. We're we're right. Yeah. But you're available on the eleventh, Rose. You said, yes. Right? Yep. That's my weekend off. Yeah. And we'll just fill it up with all kinds of fun things. <sighs> All right, so we're back. I'm ready to the 11th. Back and in as a Katie, meeting. you're okay on the 11th? The 11th is good. Okay. All right, well, let's shoot for those dates, and I'll prompt Judy and those guys to be thinking about the um, town report schedule and when we have to get it to the printers and 
all do that good stuff. Do we have to decide who's printing it? Or? It's usually, well, last year, I forget now who we, who we had. We, oh, um, jet sir, was it Jet yeah. Service Apple? This is what my puppy did. She, she I'm wondering she if this union, your homework. union thing's mm -hmm. going to complicate budgeting this year. It may, because I think the, I don't know how the union's going to weigh in on anything yet. They haven't said anything other than we got that confirmation. I mean, they may be content with how we've approached our workforce. Uh, our workforce may be, have issues, which is why they reached out to the union, so I don't know. That's why don't we, I mean, why well, can't we be proactive and say, hey, you know, we're starting our budget process. When are mm -hmm. you guys going to show up? Yeah, I can do that. I think it's a fair question yeah. since we haven't done this before. All right, I can put on my to-do list that I will contact at and if they have any the, generic contract language they'd like to run, you know, bring, you know, put on the table, you know, if they're going to borrow language from another town that, mm -hmm. that they're comfortable with, mm -hmm. you yeah. have to start looking at that, marking yep. that up. Mm -hmm. And Sandra let me know, or let us know on um, Thursday, that health insurance is going up 12%. Blue Cross Blue Shield is. Mm -hmm. There is are more insurance? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's everywhere. Um, and there are new FLSA rules, which I'm sure will be on the union's radar. Um, that we'll probably have to look at. We're doing salaries and yeah. all that's going to be stuff. tough to absorb, you know, because everyone's home, yeah. everyone's insurance. We hear. Um, I'm sorry, back at home, the taxpayers are incurring those same increases. Mm -hmm. And then, so. And we're going to have to be cognizant that, you know, tax, property tax bills went up significantly this year because of the Act 46 debt issue. Yeah. We don't know how the Supreme Court's going to rule on that. We had hoped that they would have a decision already, but we don't. They haven't had a hearing. They haven't had the hearing yet? Um, so we don't know how that's going to play out as far as whether the court's going to make any decision on Act 46. Um, so I just want to make sure when we're looking at all of this, this insur insurance increases, um, whatever benefit package might be requested um, for market factor adjustment stuff, we're really going to have to be cognizant of the taxpayers because they're the ones paying the bills. There's, I brought some intense dark chocolate. Oh, that was yummy. Somebody just needs to open it, pass it around. Um, <coughs> go for it, Sharon. Too. No, it's not. I did not come on the stomach tonight. Okay. Um, sure. Okay. All right, good. So I think that's that's good. So the two dates that you have, Katie, are Written. in the minutes as potential half meeting days are December 14th and January 11th. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, this is how I make your hair curl. Curly with mine already is. Like a dark. All right, so moving on. Do you want to do the. Do you want more? Oh, oh I'm sorry. <laughs> IT discussion. Yes. Do you want to do the IT discussion now, or do you think that needs to get put off to the end? Um, I can say that in, the, in our discussion with the office staff, they would very much like us to resolve the, no, thanks. make a decision as to who we're going to move forward with. There's been a lot of work uh, upgrades done. You've probably seen some of the emails going around. Um, but, we have had RB Tech do. Um, they are very pleased with the outcome of the work that's been performed. Um, I can provide everyone with an analysis of 
I'm not ready to do it tonight, but I can put this together for everyone if you would like to see it um, based upon some of the recent work they did for us, what it cost us, and what that cost might look like if we move forward with the proposed contract that they gave us. Um, we have other vendors, of course, who have also um, submitted um, proposals in, in good faith, and um, I would very much like to find a way to have this stop coming up on the agenda every time. So. We had, we had, last time we talked about it, though, we had a really clear next step. And it feels like we've lost we, track of what we, that was. We um, wanted to make sure that all the information was in that folder that mm -hmm. is on the shared drive for all of us to review. So if anyone had any questions or whatnot. Um, and that's where we left off. And that's where we left it. So it's all in there. If um, if everyone is wanting to has had a chance to look at that and wants to have a deeper discussion, then I would propose that we go to, into an executive session to have that discussion because now we'll be talking about specifics of these contract proposals. So I would suggest that we're going to do that. That we wait till the end of the meeting mm -hmm. and get through mm -hmm. other things first. Mm -hmm. Exactly. All right. Um, all right. So stuff I've been working on. Went to. Uh, did you get what you wanted for your class? I did it. Oh, Thank good. <laughs> well, let us know. Thank let you us know for all you your think. work. Thank you. <laughs> Pretty dry stuff, Jen. Yeah. <laughs> right. Shout out, JC. I will. She's taking some kind of a um, class, and one of her assignments was to hear our talk about budget stuff. I don't know if she's going to show up at these budget meetings. She's fine if she does. Um, and she lives here in town? JC's wife. Maple Corner. JC's wife. Oh, oh, I guess. Yeah. I never knew that. Yes. Okay. Woodbury Fire Department. That kind of got stalled out over the summer, which was fine to not have to go to another meeting every Thursday or every yeah. other Thursday because they were waiting to get um, a variance from their DRB for the look, for the setback from the roads and all that. So that's all been done. What They're, side are they now looking at? The one where the house is? Under that 14? blue house. I think it's blue. I Maybe mean, it's gray. It's next to the old store that's going to be torn yeah. down. Um, so they have their variance. They work, their zoning administrator is Bob Martin. And um, he helped them go through the process. I guess they're, they've got their permits, they're all set. Um, two conditions in their permit they have to do with um, a snow removal plan so that it's not, you know, coming onto Route 14. And the rain runoff onto Route 14 because of, they're going to have to make the roof such that the pitch in the back makes the rain run off the back. Um, they have, they're not going to use a gable roof because it would drain onto like 14. And then they're supposed to, they're looking at swales and catch basins. Um, so they put a lot of, they put a lot of work into it. They don't need a state stormwater permit because they're under one acre. Um, so they have to get an asbestos testing done. So, um, John McCullough and Patrick Kane are the architects on the project, and within the next few weeks, they're supposed to come up with a, a drawing, a more detailed drawing. If you remember, several years ago, what was it, three years? Two, three years ago, they had, they were going to buy that property in Woodbury. Um, and the total cost of the building was approximately going to be $3.1 million. Mm -hmm. That got shot down in a big hurry. Now they're looking at coming in around 750. And they don't know yet what they're going to do with the current building across the street, whether they're going to keep it or they're going to try to, um, if they're going to sell it. So anyway, so that's kind of where things are at with them. Our next meeting anybody wants to join me is October 24th at 7 o'clock and that's at the Woodbury Fire Station. So Barry Bernstein has been coming to some of those meetings but not on a 
Yeah, when he's not out of town. Um, town office roof. Do you have any? Can you talk to Andy anymore about that? You know what's going on? The last he reported something about silicone, right? And they were going he to was going to get it buttoned up for the winter. And yeah. Put out to the stream. Okay. That's. Can you put on my to-do list to check in with Andy on the progress on the fixing the roof for the winter? And um, the auditors, I thought they were going to come tonight, but they're not ready. So that's Solomon and Powers, and they're going to come on the 11th. And there's some documents in the folder from them. They have a letter, I mean, their um, engagement letter, they call it, um, for the next three years. It's going up $500 for FY21, and then I think it's 300 going up the next couple of years. So we'll have to keep that in mind, and I'm sure Sandra will put it in the budget. But overall, I, I didn't read line to line the management letter oh yeah they need policies right some of them are working on some of them are suggested ones that i'm making a list of that we need to um think about implementing um but overall there was no um significant deficiencies and as we talked about at staff meeting it's like they've been doing it a couple of years now so now they're like they don't have any big things, so now they're kind of poking at some of these other things, which is fine. It's all good. So we will strive to meet their expectation with some of these policies. Um, you saw the certificate of voluntary recognition from the union. Um, the planning commission is interviewing Ashlyn Shannon. Tomorrow night, they've already met with Bob Martin from Woodbury. Yeah, it should Ashland. probably be the third interview. It might be on the phone. I don't know. With, but it won't be tomorrow night. With an, an, another person, a new person. Well, that other one from yeah, we have to. He's officially applied, so we have to at least honor him with an interview. Is That's that the guy from Newbury? Mm -hmm. Okay. So I assume these are not. This is a pub, these the names. They're not asking for confidentiality since we just. No. Okay. No, because Bob Martin, it's in their minutes. Okay. And it's on their agenda for interviewing Ashlyn Shanahan, who lives in, does she live East Calix? She lives in Berlin. She's moving Berlin. to Montpelier. She works at Central Vermont Regional. Florida. That's it. And we've, Jan, so Jan and I already talked about, and she's, Jan's contacted Bonnie to see if it's a conflict. She works for CBRPC. She got the zoning job. Would it be a conflict? And Bonnie said no, but she wouldn't be able to work on CBRPC projects that are in Calus. So, and then we have this other person whose name I can't remember. So you yes, won't be coming. Yes. I doubt if he'll come. I think we'll do a phone interview because yep. um, there's several there. things that he wants that I know we're not going to probably meet. Yeah. He wants he wants mileage while he's driving. We don't pay mileage, period. It's yeah. not in our budget. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so so I mean there's we can probably you know, but I think it we need to have a phone conversation. Yeah. With him. Um so you're meeting tomorrow night, which is the fifteenth, and then you would meet again oh not until November, right? I'm just right. I'm just trying to figure out the timing on when you're gonna to come to us with the recommendation. Be till November at least. Yeah. <laughs> um, Probably after November. You know, John, John's not anxious. Donna is more anxious than John is. Mm -hmm. it, and the reality is that whoever we get as ZA, you know, there's, there's going to be a three month training minimum to six month training. Mm -hmm. Just to make sure that everything goes smoothly. Um, yeah. I think what's interesting, just so that to be aware of some of this, is that. Um, couple things that are coming out. If we start looking at people that are not living in town or in neighboring towns and they think they can do this job, we're going to have to have permits online. We're going to have to have a lot of other things that are online that we do not have. So it's all things that we're Right. About. And yeah, and I guess. Permit applications. 
one of the questions is, is how available are they during the day to meet with applicants? You know, or would they have weekend hours or anyways, there's a lot of little detail things to work out. But I just, I just wanted to give you guys the update on that. So it's it's moving along at town government pace. And uh, I know it's part time. What is the what is the anticipated schedule? You mean of hours? Yeah. Um, right now, I For think. ZA? Yeah. Is it like twenty hours, 20 hours a month? Okay. Yeah. And we pay four hundred a month, which is more than Woodbury pays. <laughs> uh, I think Woodbury pays five hundred dollars every six months or something. Yeah. Like that. Right. So nobody's going to get rich on this job, but it, you know, it's a good, it's a good learning. Job. I mean, it's worth it out there. Yeah. I mean, actually, the time of year isn't bad because it's not going to be as busy with it balances applications out. in the winter. Right. It balances out. There's probably not that many applications in the winter, and there's much more in spring and summer. But right. It balances out that, that it's 20, an average of 20 hours a month, right. according to John. And well, and that person would also <laughs> take over Dot's role right. of scheduling and notice. The administrative, the, main, function. the administrative function that Dodd is currently doing to schedule DRB hearings and get notices out and documents out. So that's where we're at with that. Um, I talked briefly with Jan because it was brought to my attention that perhaps the listers, this is why Ed's here, I figured. Um, the listers right now are elected. It's a job that is ever more complicated, time demanding, computer training. What else, Jan? Very complicated and complex. Um, and what do you guys currently work now? How many hours a month do you, do you usually work? I with? probably work, I, I, I don't know about Wilson and John. I, you'd have to ask Sandy, mm -hmm. Sandra, what the hours are. I work probably 20 hours a month. I mean, yeah. it depends. Um, but you often all three meet together, right? We do when we want to discuss some things. And, you know, inspection, we'll be starting inspections, I hope, soon. Mm -hmm. um, and that's an all three some type of thing. And that, that adds the time frame because we're all going to be looking at things. Yeah, I don't have off the top of my head how much we budget for the listers. It's probably you budget 12000 salary. Salary. Um, <laughs> so my question was because they're elected, and I don't think anybody's up this coming. I am. You are. I think I'm up next year. And are I you think. We can call it up. John, I think, was up last year. Was he? And Wilson was finishing Laura's term. Maybe Laura. maybe it's Wilson that's up. I don't know. Wilson finished out Laura's term. Did we have three? Or was he elected? It's me. 2020, yep. Yeah. Wilson's 2021. Yeah, Wilson's 2021. And are you planning to run, or do you not want to say? No, I'm planning to run. I'd go and run more term, because I finally think I'm learning what I'm supposed to have learned. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, you know, it, it takes three years to know what questions to ask. Mm -hmm. And then you can start doing stuff after mm -hmm. three years. But until that time, it just it, it's, well, it's, it's, it's so complex, right? It's so complex. Yeah. The and book says that, excuse me, that your term expired this year in 2019. So if you just got reelected to four years, that means you're. I didn't up. get. I wasn't. I wasn't on the ballot last year. John was. So then this is wrong. Yeah. This is twenty. Yeah. That's. That's last year. Right. It is. You're right. No. Yeah. It says John McCullough's term expires in twenty twenty two. Twenty eighteen. Well, we don't have to worry about that tonight because we can ask. Um, it says Barbara John or Judy to look into 2019. it. Twenty nineteen. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I wonder what last year's. This is two years ago. What last year's? But on the on the website, you've got me at 2020. Right. Mm -hmm. So I don't know which is right, but we don't have to figure that out tonight. We can ask somebody to look into it. Just saying. Okay. Um, I'm sure Katie will put it in the minutes, right? Mm -hmm. So, anyways, no, um, that we don't know. know. <laughs> I'll put in the to-do list. Yeah. yeah. Um. So anyway, you know, by the time 2023 comes around, who knows? what you guys are going to be wanting to do. And but I think I, there's a problem, I mean, just like, 
who do you get? I mean, if you want to get somebody younger, <laughs> and the, I, I, it would be nice to have somebody that had wanted to do IA or whatever, you know, more educational type things. We're at an age where I'm not interested in learning all that stuff. Right. It might be nice. I don't mind going to the classes that the state takes, it gives, or mm -hmm. never it gives, or any of that, but. Well, and I had asked Jim Barlow, because this came up last year, and I had asked Jim Barlow, our town attorney, whether we needed to update our charter. He said it, it isn't by charter, but it is, needs to be a uh, vote by at the annual town meeting. So we need to put it on, on the warning. To make it an employee. To position. make it an assessor position. Oh, an assessor position. So effectively, you'd be removing the Board of Listeners, mm -hmm. replacing that with an assessor title, assessor position. So the, all the powers and functions of the listers will become that of the assessor. And that's one person. That's one person. Yeah. And if you put it on your town meeting morning and it passes, you have to make an appointment within 45 days. Within 45 days. Holy smokes. So, I'm, I'm, so I'm trying to get, put this out there. We that's need to tight. Be, we need to be thinking about this. to find someone who's interested. Right. Exactly. <coughs> so that's why I'm bringing it up, because I don't want to have it hit us at the last minute. I don't think we need to do it this year. At the annual at town meeting? Well, we might but, want to think about it. If we're going to do it, we might want to do it this year. While we have Jan and John still interested in being listers, they could, we could training. appoint them, into you, one of them into the assessor job. No, I'm not a professional assessor. Oh, you'd have to be a professional? That's a there's license. No, there's no licensing requirement for that position. There really isn't. But, you know, there's the, the state has put together a certification program and there are four levels of uh, four levels of that and bpa one is a two three not four and there's only seven of us in the state that are four that's uh, it wow and so you know uh, there's no requirement that you have to do that but if you do if you, you have an assessor and they pursue that avenue then it, it's the idea of the courses she's talking about and, you know it, it's also to get to the level i'm at for example it's it's a seven year minimum process Absolutely, yeah, nice. in probably I don't know eight, ten classes you'd have to have. You don't do the assessor. So, but you don't wouldn't have to have somebody at necessarily certified at that level. Yeah. But you probably would want to have people that knew what they were doing, that what they were doing. Mm -hmm. and that that's where the, that's where it becomes difficult. <laughs> this thing is, if I I'm not trying to take over your meeting. No, I'm just no, trying to shut up. Um, Listen, you know. What's happened is that over the last 10 years, in specifically, with the changes in the income sensitivity and the changes in current use, mm -hmm. and now what happens is that, let's just say somebody withdraws two acres from their property enrolled in current use, mm -hmm. the, the listers get notification of that, then they have to, they have to set a new value on the, what, what is being withdrawn that, for that within the next 30 days. You mean the value of the two acres? Of yeah. The yeah. And so it's all done online. And so, it, but it can happen any month and any time. Mm -hmm. So the function of the listers office or the assessor's office is really, it never stops. It yes. never stops throughout the course of the year. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so then by you know, October 15th, you have to have your final 411 and on December, December 31st, you have to have everything. When you say, who, when you say, you have to have it in, who has to have it in the listers? The listers do, to the state. If or the want, assessor, if that's what or, or the assessor. And so there's all these different time frames you have to meet, then you can throw in all the in income sensitivity, which runs to the amount of the middle of October. There's still making changes on the mm -hmm. stuff. So how are towns coping with Well, they aren't. I, I was about to tell you that I'm the assessor in multiple towns. Mm -hmm. I am. Do you live in Cowles? I'm sorry. I, I do. Miss, I, I miss introductions. I met Claude Felcher. I've been every appraisal in Cowles since 1989. Yeah, he's helped out a lot. Okay. So, um, but why had, there were two towns that, con I work for Nimmer, I'm the senior appraiser for Nimmer. There were two towns that contacted us last year that decided to go to assessors, and they hadn't picked anybody to serve in that function, and here they had their 45 days. Mm -hmm. So they, I get this emergency phone call, can you come and do this stuff for us? And I'm thinking to myself, well, I really don't have time. My staff, I have 12 people who work for me. I don't really have time for them either, but we're not going to let you flounder around out there. And they will come in and, 
take care of stuff and we can pull things off because we're really, really efficient at it. We know what we're doing. Mm -hmm. So that happened with two towns last year and it happens mm -hmm. every, every spring. After town meeting. After town meeting. Because they don't plan ahead like we're trying to do. Yeah, exactly. So I don't, you know, it's, it's something you want to think about, I mm -hmm. think, a year or two in advance. I don't think mm -hmm. as long as you have Jan and John, whoever's but are willing we'll to run for listers, that you have to jump right in on that. But right. at some point in time, right. they may come along and say, but I've had enough. Right. And then mm -hmm. you can't find somebody else. And are you if you don't have an assessor, are you required to have three listers? You're, you're required to have three? a board of listers. And that has you to should be have three, and you must have at least two, because okay. you have to have at least two to sign the grant. Right. Because I'm just thinking if, for instance, somebody didn't want to run and didn't run and we were down to two, that would give us time to the next town meeting, put it on the warning, and hopefully have somebody in mind for the position. But, I mean, what's, is the, the state not going to do anything to help with this? I mean, this is, this lister job is huge. It's, it's, it actually has gotten worse and worse and worse. Um, there are fewer people that have, there are few, I was went to the Valley meeting this, you know, two weeks ago, and there were, you know, there were some people that were like under 50 that were there. It was, in, it was incredible. <laughs> it was. Under 50. It must not be from Vermont. Yeah. You know, so it, 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 there are a few that are coming along, but they're few and far between. Mm -hmm. I, I think that over time, I think people are coming, going to come into Vermont. There's a lot of nice things here. We do mm -hmm. a lot of great things. Yeah. We're, we're really expensive. My taxes are up too, by the way. Yeah, no doubt. <laughs> no doubt. Yes, yeah. Right. But, you know, there's a, I think there are things that can draw people here. Mm -hmm. And the young gentlemen here earlier, they like to get involved yeah. in town. It, it's a good, it's a niche sort of thing. Mm -hmm. And I don't see the property tax going away because we don't have any other avenue that we can afford. No. But we're not going to, I mean, if we had an assessor, a professional assessor, that's going to cost us more than what we're spending now. A lot. Like, what do you think we would be looking at? Well, yeah. Okay. I mean, we don't we'd only be a part-time. We don't, yeah, we don't need a full-time assessor. We would, you, you, it you would don't. Be, be Here, here's, here's the problem with me in that assessor position that, that I run into, is that, like you mentioned earlier, I'm the assessor in a town, and I'm, I really need to be there to get my physical work done, you know, f four to eight hours a month. But those things that come in that you have to deal with the current use issues that come up. Some correspondence that may come in. Keeping oh, track yes. of the property transfers. The phone call, mm -hmm. somebody comes in and got a question about it going, enrolling in current use, predicting something out of current use. Who takes care of that? That's right. the problem. Right. And if I'm the assessor, and I don't, I have, if I were assessor here, I live here. Right. But I'm not, I must not want to do that. But that, that, would be be here. but that would be okay. But if, if I'm coming from away, right. I got so my it's so not just a four or eight hour access. job, and now it's it's gotten bigger. So right, it's not like it's you can just come in once a month and mm -hmm. have that function done. No, I, I wasn't thinking that you would be able to. What about grievances? How does that work? Yeah, yeah, that's what I was just going to ask. It's their show. It's their show. Okay. It's their show. So so we have a abatement issue, then the assessor. Would be the person that would represent the past lister side of that. Okay. Yeah. And then I had a question because yeah. um, we had to do the charter so that we could hire a treasurer that wasn't a resident. So would we run into the same thing that we'd have to have the assessor put on the charter? No, so we don't could, have, you don't have you to don't do have have the charter. No, you, don't. you don't have to be a resident no. to no. be an assessor? No, you don't. Okay. And Jim said we would just have to put something on the warning. The town would have a vote. The town would have a vote. To switch from lister to assessor. Right. But then, then there's no residency requirement? Mm -hmm. No. Okay. No. But it, it's gotten very complicated. Yeah. And it's gotten very time consuming. And, you know, I'm, the, I'm an assessor in the town of Milton, for example. Mm -hmm. And. That's a big, a way bigger town. It is. Well, it's it's 4,400 parcels, yeah. Yeah. But what's interesting, I mean, I have a staff, I have an assistant assessor, and I have an administrative assistant, but they're, they're, they're half time. But the, the things that I have to deal with there, you'll push it, I, it's all current use. It's just <laughs> it's all current use. It's Milton. Uh, Milton. Uh, 
Yeah. Oh, I get that when I go there. It's, yeah. Yeah, I believe it. <laughs> and sometimes they get the answer to appraisal questions. Uh -huh. Somebody will come to the door and right. something. And else. most of them are withdrawals of yeah. se sections of, of larger lots. They are. There, there's happens to be like five or six families there that are farm families and they have grandkids. Right. So they're always pulling something out or doing something in part. They're part of the business and it, it, it just gets complicated. Is there a better way? To, is there a better way? Is there a better way to do that? Did you? I'm sorry. Could, the could, state could is could recommend to the to the state legislature well, or the tax my, department. This or is something? the world according to Ed. The state does it completely wrong. Oh, okay. And they but they just won a court case. And I just think it was wrong as well. Okay. Um, but nobody wants to listen to me in terms of how they how they do their function. But. Um, I think as long as there is current use, and I'm not that I'm opposed to it, I think it does some nice things for us. Mm -hmm. I think it preserves, I, do, I think it does do preserve some the way it does. I right. think it does. Yeah. We pay dearly for it. But if we want to look at the way this guy was working in Barnett this past week, we're doing a reappraisal there. It's, it was absolutely gorgeous. It is. Yeah. Absolutely gorgeous. It is peach and Barnett. It is. Wow. It is. Barnett. But it's been right. Barnett. Barnett, yeah. But it's, yeah. But there's a lot of places that are involved there and conserve land in this area. It's, it's a beautiful, beautiful. And Cowles is a beautiful. Whenever I go around the state, people say, Where are you from? That's not from Cowles. They say, It's a beautiful town. I said, It is. It's a beautiful town. It is. You know, so. Yeah. yeah we have 143, 144 parcels in current use. Just just for out of 500. So 20% of Cowles is in current use. And I have 67 in Milton. And I have 147. Yeah. So there you have it. And so, yeah, the, that, and the other thing that's gotten better, worse, I think, is we have to do our sales equalization online. After you've done your property transfer, you can't do it in one right. step. You have to do it in two steps. Wow. And so that's the other thing. Yeah. And the equalization has become, you know, more important if we get that right. And that's what happened to us the last update that we did. Um, you mean Cal's? Yeah. Oh, and that affects... Um, I actually wrote a paper, a white paper for Val, because the, the, the impact of the year before a rebreathal is complete, that the equalization must be accurate, because it was not accurate in our case. It was not no fault of the individual listers, by the way. It was the fact that we had a change of a lot of listers right. over the course of time, and things were just not picked up. And so therefore, the equalization was wrong. And, and that's where exactly you think where it, it affects your, um, what's your back? Yeah, your, yeah, CLA, that's what I'm looking for. So the understanding at the common level appraisal, what it's really used for, it becomes a divisor for the education tax rate right. from the state. Right. And current use now. And current use. <laughs> so when you are less than one, it makes it makes the number of tax rates higher. And if you're greater than one, it makes the tax rate lower. And so that's why a lot of towns, I've worked, I've worked in Charlotte since 94, they make sure that their common level is always right around one. And if it gets down 95, they're saying, Ed, just do a reappraisal because it affects the high end property so drastically because mm -hmm. the tax rate gets infl artificially inflated. Right. Mm -hmm. So the legislature this year passed some laws that they changed the, the, the guidelines so that a common level is now the lower end is 85%. Mm -hmm. So if you go low 85%, you're going to do a reappraisal. It used to be 80. And the other end is now at 115. And there used to be nothing there. So what happened is we had a lot, we had several towns throughout the state. They had a common level of 120. Uh, 1. 1.2 becomes the divisor. They get a huge tax break, and the rest of us are picking up the, the, the difference. Right, that's not fair. And a statewide property tax. It, it is, so they put that, they negotiate with the legislature to go to 85 or 115. In my opinion, I think we should do an update every year across the whole state. We never have all this big fluctuation. Yeah, right, 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 right. I work in Washington State, and what they do in Washington State is they do change their base values every year. Really? Yep. Wow. New cost tables every year. Mm -hmm. They look at their land values if they want to change them or not. Then they do a six-year inspection cycle, so every six years they're all inspected. Ah. Hmm. Or at a sale. Pardon? Or at a resale, right? I mean, a lot of states... When when a property is sold, it triggers an assessment. We don't do we that. We do not. It, it's not. It's not legal. Right. Exactly. Washington. No. But but lawyers work really hard to avoid that. They they do. 
Does Washington State have current current use or something? Oh, yeah, they all every state does. Every state. Every state has something. Okay. Every state does. Um, we're not gonna we're not gonna crack this nut tonight. No, no. I'm just trying. I mean, this is really helpful. I mean, I I, information. I, I came down because I saw it was on the agenda. I, I'm, I'm not trying to take over the, this meeting. Yeah, do you have any other, of, yeah, but, any other words of wisdom? Well, but if it comes up and you need some resources, just let, I'm just a mile up the road. Right. You know, so just feel free to call me. I'm, I'm glad to come down and talk with you about okay. it. And I, I just, it's a big decision for a town. A lot it of is. towns are making that decision now. Right. Uh, and they, they're struggling with it. Uh, I think a struggling is going to be able to find somebody. Well, that actually leads to a question that I was going to ask. What is what is the path? You know, if it sounds like something that lends itself to apprenticing, maybe. There, like there how, is, do, how is, do you get started? You get a, what happens is people just get elected. The, the, the person who's not there gets voted from the floor to be a listener. Oh no, there's got to be another way. There's no, gotta be it's another not. And then, and then you get elected in in March. And, and one week later, I'm going to a class I had uh, with all this stuff, and I don't have no clue what I'm talking about. And it was, I think it, I don't know if it was an Emmerich class or something. She got to state. listen to me talk, <laughs> and I'm like this over her head because she, she has no idea what the language is. <laughs> right. right. The one, right. The one yes. week after election, and then and then the next two weeks later was something from um, from the state. Yeah. Um, their their annual and they time it learner to lister. To so we, meeting to be. You know, we I do a, a camera seminar in February every year, and then we do a grand list seminar right. in March mm -hmm. every year, mm -hmm. and then the state does some of their stuff. Beginner lister. Beginner okay. lister also in March. So somebody, so you said you have a couple of people in your office that help you with doing assessor work for towns. Are you making that part of what Nemric has to offer now? We uh, we we are. We do maintenance and assessment work in 35 towns in Vermont. So and it's something that, that, that so that's a resource. If we go to that route and we need an assessor, we might contact Nemrec to say, "Do you have somebody available to be our assessor? We have to appoint somebody in 45 days." If you did that, you would want to make that call. And I mean, there are other contractors around, but nobody has the resources that we have. To talk yeah. About and you would make that phone call and I'm sure that somebody would make sure that you did that your work would get done and you would get a grand list out. Mm -hmm. It would be better if you had a year's notice though. So it would. Budget. Right, right. No, that well we have to know, right, we'd have to know budget wise too. So I I mean that's why we're having this discussion now. So it doesn't like slam us. And so you said it would be a significant cost increase. What I'm charging towns now is eighty five dollars an hour. Plus mileage to get there. So a uh, town our size with our level of demand. I, I don't think our current use parcels are subdividing as quickly as Milton say or even Charlotte. But but you know you have to create less activity. Activity. transfer less, less activity, activity here. Yeah. If you have a, a big year, there's a lot of permits mm -hmm. coming out. You're probably talking. I bet you get your work done in five to seven days. Your field work. I, I was a lister here for in, mm -hmm. in the late '80s as well. Yeah. And so Don and I would drive around on Saturdays and do Don Singleton and I would drive on Saturdays to get all the, all the stuff done. The inspectors? Yeah. yeah. So yeah. what do you think, a thousand hours for Callis per year? Mm, I don't think it'd be that much, to tell you the truth. I really I, More than a hundred, <laughs> less than a thousand? I think, I think it'd be, you know, I think you count on probably f 15 days, 15. probably work, something along those lines. That's and it wouldn't be full days. 120 hours a year. Oh, you can uh, 85 bucks an hour. That's, what do you come up with, Sharon? That's cheaper. Than uh, I did now. six hour days. That's you said not all. Out. Six hour days. You know, we're we're we're, we, we're budgeting 15, twelve thousand a year. I, I think you would cover that. I think that would cover what you're trying to do. You think so? Okay, well that's good to wow. know. It it would at even at eight hours a day. Eight hours a day, fifteen. Is ten thousand two hundred not kind of expenses? Well, that's that doesn't include mileage. Right, but that's eight hour, eight hour, eight fifteen eight hour days. The other thing we spend quite a bit of time on is mapping. I mean, like we just had, we, we, yeah. we had um, we we had Christine here for mm -hmm. six hours of work, four, well, four hours actually. So we try to keep up with our personal map. But if we could lighten the load on 
the listers and make it less unpleasant um, and, and less demanding. Like I said, a heavy, heavy duty stuff, we could assign that to an assessor, and like Nembrick, and then the mapping and all this yeah. ancillary stuff, we could then have listers. But you've still doubled your. Then, well, then you're well, you'd be reducing some, but yeah. we'd be re yeah. you know, well. I'm just saying it might come out. It's going to be hard to get people like you and John going forward. Right, yeah. it is. That's reality. I mean, you guys are martyrs. It, it, but you, but you, but you don't know who's going to come in or mm -hmm. who just will step up and say, "I'm interested in doing this." You yeah, I'm keep hoping Laura would move back. But right. I don't think she would. I thought that Laura was going to be, you know, a keeper. And, yeah. You know, it just didn't yeah. happen. But and that happens all all the time. It right. Just, it yeah. Just Life changes. When she worked with, with James and I, we were doing the update. She wrote it down with us. Yeah, she was sharp. She was. She yeah. was sharp. Yeah. Um, and so it's too bad that you know we, we lost that resource. Yeah, yeah, it is. But it's it's. But she it's, still helps us with the town report. Oh, good. <laughs> but it's not going to get any easier, and it's not going to get any cheaper. Right. Right. Does PBR put out feelers at high school level, like you know, high school kids being assessors and stuff like that? You know, and, and they have, and I I. I thought for a while the thing that we should do in Vermont, and I, I actually told the previous director of this, is that it's not part of your meeting, I apologize. Um, let us do, there are several of us that are at a certification level and experience that we could teach a one semester course. Mm -hmm. Let us go to VTC or let yeah. us go to Johnson or whatever. Absolutely. Let us teach a one semester course in appraisal and be the mimic course based course one-on-one -on -one. Right. and then do a semester of an internship with somebody yeah and right. so there's a one-year program right. and that can put get some that people, would people up I, right. I would think yeah. because nobody yeah. knows about this no right. that's just it it's just yeah. it's like that's, you would take the edge wow. off yes yeah. and they won't let you do that you know I, it's uh, the director I spoke with changed and oh, so uh, yeah so <laughs> He's, he's no longer there. I haven't approached Jill with all of this. I have to get Ernie's blessing. And there's really only mm -hmm. probably five or six of us that can teach that course. I mean, I've taught college level, so I don't know how to set that up. But, right. but there's, you know, it's a lot of effort. It's like it's an up and coming place for somebody. If, if it's a year, you know, a year course, six months college, you know, six months in the classroom, six months on the job, it's a really good way for somebody to get. A career started. You know, I'm I, I'm looking for three people. I'm look, I would be looking for three people in the spring to go out and collect data. I'm going to be looking because I have I'm turning away projects. These are full time positions. They're full time positions that pay what? I'm just trying to think the cost. Forty five thousand dollars an hour plus benefits. No. Forty five thousand dollars a year plus plus <laughs> yes, yeah. yeah. an addition all health care care. Yeah. Wow. That's, that's pretty, pretty sweet. Good. That's, that's good. And four weeks of vacation. Cool. That's a great job for somebody just coming off. Might take. The problem is you have to work for me. That's, that's the problem. Where uh, is it? Where is well, you need really good health care. Yeah, right. Where is it? We're, we're all over the state, but I'm looking for somebody up in Northeast Kingdom. I need two people up in Northeast Kingdom. Yeah. You so you, she no, no. Is JD still here? Yeah. No, I'm just thinking about people I Would know like who, are, who are looking. Yeah. I mean, what a great way to get I'm your foot in the door. I'm not looking for a job, but thanks, John. It's, you know, it's, <laughs> it's not for everybody. Mm -hmm. You know, it's I, I don't do a lot of day collections. I have been in the last month or so. But I have more fun going up and knocking on doors and talking to people. I, it really, I've had a lot of fun. It really has been. But I have I have some of my staff, but that's a scary thing for them. Yeah. Yeah. To go yeah. up and do it. Just go, hi, I'm, yeah. I'm Ed. I'm working on the reappraisal for the town. And I want to go through all your house. So not right. everybody can do no. that and make them, make them feel mm -hmm. comfortable with it. Right. Yeah, they hear appraisal. Ding, ding, ding. My yeah. taxes are going up. My taxes are going to go up. Yeah, yeah. And you have to be able to dispel all that mm -hmm. and make them feel comfortable. Yeah. And I teach my, tell my staff, this, this is a privilege to get into somebody's house. It's not a requirement. It's That's a privilege. Right. That's right. Right. They can run you out as fast as you, as you can turn right. and get out of here. Is there any way to piggyback any of this career stuff? with those looking to get a real estate license or like those people have the, their mm -hmm. kind of realtor training association. Re realtor association it, it, the, the same but they're different mm -hmm. they're, they really are they're not not just quite the same thing but i was thinking if somebody was a real estate agent and they aren't always selling houses if that would be something I and mean, there certainly are Sounds like it's in the there same are a lot of listers in, they're not there are listers in towns that who are realtors there, there are. 
no, no doubt. It's a different mindset, it's, though. You yeah. get the skinny on some property deals. Yeah. But, that, but then they're also that they're limited. Oh, what they, they there's some limitations as to what they can really yeah. do without a conflict of interest. And stuff. Well, I'm so glad you showed up. I really like appreciate that. No, 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 no. It was very informative. Very informative. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you. We have a video documented now. It's quite a class. Now. Toy show. You're on TV. You want a piece of chocolate for you? No, thanks. I appreciate it. I think. Thank you. Thank you, Ed. Thank you. What's interesting is is you know we had this conversation in the context of of lister and assessor but we could have it around zoning administrator or even even being select board you know that's it's not the time but the the knowledge and the just kind of awareness from everybody's part and the fact that we have to do things differently i think we have to do things differently from you know Soup to nuts, A to Z. Assessor to zoning administration, A to Z. How convenient is that? Good uh, <laughs> job. Yeah. That was good. But we're either everything is going to become professional and not doable, or we're going to, all of us, retrain ourselves about how to do things differently, how to talk about it differently, how to invite young people, young or anybody, I don't mean to say young, anybody who hasn't been involved before. Mm -hmm. um, and make it doable and i think it starts with it starts with everybody being you know kind of where they are how do we make this more doable what are we how do we kind of lighten the load for all of us streamline yeah bringing having a class to just here's what being a lister is mm -hmm. even if you don't if it's not your career just like oh how much knock that first three years of learning curve off and make it so much more doable well, I think that's why it's good that we're talking about this now, because I think we're, you know, by putting things on our radar, you know, ahead of time, yeah. it makes us more able to understand and plan and maybe and, put some feelers out. And I know I will only do another three years. I don't think I'll do another uh, three years beyond. Yeah, and I, I would do this. And I think the same thing is with John. I'm not sure about Wilson, yeah. how strong he feels. He's really good at property transfers getting better but you know yeah. I, I just I know that there's going to be a right break. and that's why you know that's why I'm bringing it up now so that it's on everybody's think tank you know what are we going to do and when well, and maybe one of the things we do is try to is try to do some not just passing of the baton but training yeah training shadowing yeah. you know yeah. it, you know it's not that class right now right. the class is that, that would be such a great opportunity for, for folks that, you know, they want some kind of a career path and it seems and like, it's, a and it's, and it's like a, the league would sponsor year, that at BTC. It's a year's time to, you know, to be able to do it, I know. Well, anyways, I'm, yeah, glad, he, I'm glad he came. Yeah, I am too. I'm glad he saw it. All right. That's all I was here for too. <laughs> okay. I could have moved it up if I'd known. That's all right. I don't think he, yeah, we, we, I yeah. was here for the ZA and the... Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Jan. Um, Thanks, Jan. Thank you. Um, I'm trying to schedule Hi, time to meet with Alfred. I'm waiting for him to get back to me. Um, when we met with the office staff on Thursday, um, we talked about the new server, which has been ordered, mm -hmm. and a keypad entry system so that people are constantly losing their keys, and then Judy or Barbara has to come down on Saturday or Sunday, whatever, to let somebody in. Mm -hmm. So Cliff's checked out some keypad in entry here, systems. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, we, just like anything else nowadays, there's so many different options available out there. But uh, after talking over with the office staff, they would prefer a, a very simple uh, yeah. keypad system that if the battery in it or capacitor or whatever powers it dies um, you can use a key to open the door in an emergency um, so just it, one that's installed on the door itself it would be on the door itself it yeah. wouldn't be uh, internet of things smart yeah. type device it would just be a basic keypad that they could uh, they could assign different codes you can buy that at all the shop yeah exactly 
hundred bucks. Um, yeah, that's what I told them. If that's all they want to do, then we can do it for a hundred or less. Yeah. Right. Um, How secure lows. are those compared to? I mean, nothing's one hundred percent secure because I can snap. It's it's going to be every bit as secure as what you got there. It is okay. I mean, bottom line is, if you've got a latch on this side and you've got a lock on the other side. Somebody could pop that glass and reach in and open the lid. Right, right. That's what I mean. So either yeah. either one's not 100% secure. So let you know how complicated these things can be. I was at a public meeting in Randolph at their town office. And the meeting ended at, you know, 5 to 9. And the conversation went out into the parking lot. And I went to open my car. I have this remote where it senses. I'm like, shoot. I left my key. Bob on the chair, mm -hmm. locked. And so the person with the code, we had a caller, she was in Braintree. She drives a half an hour, but by the time she got home, came back, it was you now quarter to 10, she comes back, beep, 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 wouldn't work because only certain people were authorized to open that building mm -hmm. after 9 p.m. And her code doesn't work. So oh. I wound up having to find a place to sleep in Randolph because of that awful system. I, I would not advise that oh, system. If anybody can do it, you can, John. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad it wasn't me. Mm -hmm. I was not a happy camper. No, I bet not. No. So, yeah, wow. and, you know, talking with office staff, they imagine different scenarios, and that's why it came back around to just a simple system. Yeah. And can um, you change, and is, this isn't one of those systems where Different people would have different codes no. and, and this timing thing and what you, it, all of them seems come with some degree of that, um, but after talking off the staff, that's not what they want at all. Right, that's they not want one code, them. and if for ever any reason they need to change it, it can be easily changed. If for whatever reason, but everybody somebody would have was the same coming code. in, everyone would have the same code. Yeah. Right, just because it has just the capacity doesn't mean things. that you configure it to do all those things. Exactly. Yeah. Right. And, you know, if for some reason one of the committees came one night and they punched the code in and it didn't work, uh, Judy said, yeah, that's not a problem for her to come and use the key to, to open the door. But what it does give them is if things start spiraling out of control, well, now we don't know who has access, who has the code, who yeah. doesn't, they can just... Change it. Change it, that's right. Well, and the problem now is because keys have been given out to different people over the years, and when they're no longer on a committee, yeah. or they, can change they, yeah. they still it's, have a key. It's a lot or, well, if they or some people lose, right, Or some people lose <laughs> their key, yeah, and yeah. they can't get in. In the long run, it's going to be less expensive to punch a new code in that's right. versus changing the locks yeah. every time. Right. And so that's something that Andy is. could put right in, any of us could actually mm -hmm. just... Plus so I'm going to send them a few links and they can decide design-wise what they like. So I remember we had that... Polished brass, nickel, whatever. <laughs> remember we had that issue on a Friday, I think it was, when Sandra was here and the door wasn't locked and somebody came in? Would she... How would that work? Would you still she lock still it? Still can dead bolted. Let me, let me finish. So she would be able to still lock it from the inside? Yes. And... Because you wouldn't be able to... Um, Code it from the inside, right? To be locked. The deadbolt didn't need to look. Yeah, I know, John. I know. All they would do is fix the deadbolt. I'm asking. That would still be there. Okay, I'm asking. Yeah. yeah. That's okay. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah, it's it's it functions just like the key works on one side or the keypad works on one side. Yeah. Okay. And then there is a manual lock that you would lock from the inside. Okay. And the other consideration was, would you want to have? Um, two lock system. In other words, there's the doorknob and there's the deadbolt. Um, and right now what we have is we have a deadbolt that uses one key and a doorknob that uses another key. And the systems that they pretty much have decided they think is going to work for them, it, the keypad would function on the deadbolt only. The doorknob would only serve as a doorknob. It would not be a key knob. Okay. That's a difference. So you will, so, so we only have one. There's only one key, key. to open the door. So oh, you'd have to okay. have a key and the code to get in. No, just the code. We just would. It wouldn't be double. Wouldn't enable. So you're like right now. Right, to walk layer. in here, mm -hmm. if both those are locked, you right. need two keys right, to right. open it. Yeah, so imagine if the doorknob 
the thing you, the, mm -hmm. that you turned didn't have a key on it at all. Right. And all so you had to do was unlock the deadbolt. Right. So if that's you're in here on Friday like. by yourself, you turn you on throw the, the deadbolt. Dead okay. Yep. That's my concern. I want to make sure that they're safe. Well, but then I w imagine that the reason we have a deadbolt and the handset key is that a, some it's a security thing. Right. It, it, so it's yeah. it's for maintenance. So that they when when the maintenance need people need to come in or if there's gonna be janitorial work or whatever, they have a sign they put up and say don't throw the deadbolt because those people only have a key to the door knob. It was recommended that we have both when the office was built because of the vault and mm -hmm. you know, all those kinds of things, all the valuable stuff that's in here. So that it's harder for somebody to get in because they'd have to have two keys right. to get in. Right. So that's why it was set up that so way. So we should check with our insurance because insurance well, that's a good idea. these days want a deadbolt. Yeah, we should check. We're going to have a deadbolt. Mm -hmm. We're not going to have But a you have to have enable. I mean, if the, if the protocol is to not enable the deadbolt. That's not what I heard. Oh, we're going to enable the deadbolt and not. Okay. Exactly. Okay. All right. But, if, but, but I don't know if we're going to that too. It does make sense to, does make sense to talk check. to the insurance company to see if there are other requirements. Right, because now we have a two key entry system and right. we would be down to basically okay. just the keypad. Yes. Right. For entry. And that's my question is how easy is that to Well we could keypad both and they could they could disable the keypad on one, but if they mm -hmm. down the road needed to for some reason lock the office down. Right. If we had a problem mm -hmm. and you could have just for one day they could have a different code on the other one or right something. you could have the doorknob as it is right now requiring a key yeah. and you just opt not to use it unless there's some special circumstance in which right. case you lock yeah, it there you so go. we can have a further discussion yeah. with them yeah, yeah, that's that a hard be. conversation yeah. with the insurance company yeah and the problem then, is we have so many keys out there we don't know who has them right, so yeah. we want to know your thoughts right yeah. <laughs> probably not the best that's way to feel better actually right. that's probably not the best way there's probably somebody at the lct that can and then the other it. consideration is do you do the same thing for both doors? right because this door here what is that drone behind you does it have yeah see it has double it's the same setup as this one and it stays locked all the time mm -hmm. yeah they, they even have it locked season. during the day. Mm -hmm. so open it in bug season. Bug season, yes. Yeah, but that one can stay locked. We're not, right. we're we're not, not changing that. We're worried about how the problem, we only want to make sure we still, we, all, we at least still need to be able to have keys. Right, if we're we concerned can. about the volume of keys that's out there not knowing where they go, right. at the very right, least right, you right. have to change these locks. Right, I don't know that everybody has keys to those anyways. It's the same key, isn't it? I don't know, I never tried it. I know a way to find out. Right. Yeah. And actually, this one would be easier for somebody to break in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just around here. Well, anyways. So enough of that. Huh. Um, town hall. It's probably four to five weeks for completion of this phase. I talked to John McCullough. He's going to come in um, hopefully next meeting, the 28th. Do an update. Um, Did you mean to skip traffic ordinance? No, I said that Alfred and I are trying to pick oh, a date. Oh, that's what that was yeah. about. Okay. Um, you should go over and see the town hall if you haven't already. There's some kind of a tour. Floor's down, right? Thing. Yeah, it's. I think it's pretty much down. New floor. Yeah. yeah. Um, there's a tour. Is I think it's the weekend of the 20th, I don't know, 26th, 7th, I don't know, something like that where they're doing a tour around town of four different houses and the town hall, and it's a $25 cost, and the proceeds are going to um, Ernie Parrish's family. So, um, you know about this, right? The CV, the Vermont Solid Waste Management District there. Budget thing, yeah. Budget thing, it says that they're not, we're not going up for FY21. So you got you got to no, build those to those. Unless unless you, unless and he's on the right? he's on the executive committee. Right. I think on the fiscal. He might be chair of the budget committee. Yeah. So they're very have, prudent as compared to how they used to operate. Yes. Leave it at that. Yes, they are. Do you have any other updates on Vermont Solid Waste Management? I I not me. 
Okay. All right. Um, anything anybody else wants an update on? I don't know. Seems like, I mean, there's a ton of stuff going on, but that's So just of... FYI, I know, continue to worry about that me. roof. That, that roof me. problem, it's not a leak. It's it's me. I always sneeze in doubles. It, it, it appears that the problem is we get an ice dam and we get backing up, and this is a combination of reasons. But Andy Felice, our building maintenance guy, mm -hmm. superintendent, whatever we call him, um, building commissioner, he is speculating at this point and needs to still what he needs to do before winter or before it gets to the point of last, what it did last year. Is needs to get in there and scope out what's going on toward the eave area, and he, he's of the belief, and as is Hutchins Roofing, I think they came out and eyeballed it, that there's enough heat loss that it's heating the roof and causing the melt, and therefore the ice damming. So mm -hmm. it may be simpler than, I and mean, we have damage, we think, right. and, and, and it may be much more minor than we're worried it could be. But it may be a relatively simple fix in terms of if you can get at air sealing it better and it might involve more insulation or foaming in there. Mm -hmm. But you might be able to do a, uh, an insulation fix to get us through the winter, just a quick Yeah, I just fix. want to make and then sure. a better thing next year. It's just if it's been going on for like two yeah. years trying to get some kind of a fix. Yeah. And so I keep bringing it up because I want right. somebody to do something for this season. Right. right. And it's, it's really hard to get somebody he's, to He's got a full-time job, and he, because of his, his skill set, he's very much in demand, as mm -hmm. are all these people. And frankly, we lost Ernie, so there's a huge gap there that's going to be unmet. Yep. So someone else, um, you know, those people provide a community service in addition to earning a livelihood. So. Um, the only other thing was we had the Curtis Pond Dam was inspected by the state. Yeah. Did you read it? Yeah, I, I scanned it pretty quick. Yeah, I guess it's, it's in the same condition we always thought it was. Right. It's bad. Yeah. And uh, they had some ideas, which I thought were, it's a different approach than before. They were basically saying, don't touch, don't do anything. Mm -hmm. Now they're coming up with some ideas for. Right, but it's still not the town's responsibility. It's not us. Once That's, we do it, we own. Right, you don't want to. Share in a liability, so. That's so what we're very, very careful about. What we do, I know they wanted some um, topsoil, which Toby was trying to track some down to give them. But all they can do is dump it, and then put it in a pile, and they keep and they can do what they to. want with it after that. Yeah. Because they con they also contacted me about a tree, and I said. Yeah, the the, the state wants that yeah, tree cut. Right, there's a tree that they want cut. Um, I guess Dan Weston came out and looked at it because it's technically a weck problem because they wanted to know they wanted so to have the, the road crew come out and look at it and I said mm -mm. we're not cutting it. Yeah, yeah on what basis Denise do we even bring soil over just as oh you need some topsoil yeah. oh like I need a topsoil and I yeah. got some because they had a pile right yeah, yeah. okay not a, no not and they can Don Heiss can do with it what he wants <coughs> topsoil yeah, I mean, and Weck is going to try to come out and do something with the tree. Because, like, no, I'm sorry, we can't do anything. Weck should the tree. be really contacting Father Gills because mm -hmm. they own that. Or, yeah, I, I don't know, actually. The, the woman station. who bought the Father Gill house is an attorney. And I said, Whoa, you bought this house with all that damn stuff? Oh, I knew about it. And I, this is what she said to me Eileen Simpson. Eileen, about four or five, yeah. four years ago, 2016. Uh, told me that uh, she made sure that she was that she did not purchase that part of it that aspect of the property mm. so I don't know so my my guess is father goes to own whatever yeah, I don't know how they did it mm. yeah. yeah they would just it would, the deed would be clear of what is not being conveyed right right, right. So, so she so she must she have said she knew about it in advance and that was part of the negotiation yeah she sure. negotiated that out of the which is really interesting. interesting. Isn't it? Eileen Simpson? Mm -hmm. Yes. She was on the DRB for one hearing. Yeah. Yeah, she was. I guess 
really retired. Yeah. All right. Um, minutes. Actually, I have one more. One more thing. Go ahead. Business, do business, etc. Um, I everyone probably remembers a uh, meeting or so ago. Um, Larry Bush came in and invited us all to take mm -hmm. a walk through the Cal's Forest West over Forest. the mm -hmm. um, Fall Foliage Weekend. I took him up on the offer. Um, it was very informative um, having Eric there and just Eric's talking amazing. about it. Yeah, he's the he's the guy. As Larry said, who wrote the book on yeah. uh, taking care of the forest. Uh -huh. So the reason I bring this up is because um, there will be some proposal or proposals coming from the Conservation Commission yeah. as to uh, something they'd like to put on the ballot. On the morning? The old yeah. growth idea. Yeah, I talked to Larry because I, I wanted to see if he was coming, wanted to come tonight. Mm -hmm. And he said they weren't ready. No, that, it, it'll be a little bit before they're ready. But yeah, they, it'll be something to put on a warning on and the morning, okay. let the uh, town decide how uh, we want to manage our town forest. Well, yeah, because Larry's um, goal is to have us not do anything with this particular forest. No cutting and mm -hmm. just let things fall as they may and things like that. Yes, there are um, there's a, experts who are truly qualified experts arguing on both sides of that equation. Is it better to just let it do its thing or is it better to Manage use it. management techniques and whatnot? Um, the most current issue of Seven Days does have an interesting article Oh, really? Um, about that argument and, you know, why people Pros weigh in on one side. Well, there, there's another argument. I don't know the history of this town forest. I do remember when I lived in Woodbury, there's a town, Woodbury town forest, at least one, and that was conveyed by the Meyer family. Mm -hmm. You'll know John Meyer, mm -hmm. who was a resident. Mm -hmm. yeah. His dad, Hugo, conveyed that to the town. Um, his reason for bequeathing it to the town was he was concerned that regular folks couldn't couldn't afford to have a wood lot, but heated their house with wood, and maybe if they had a tight budgetary time, they could go get with a get with a permit from the town select board, go in and they they could cut mark trees and supply their homes with heating fuel. Um, so then the Conservation Commission, not knowing that history, did the same thing. This is some 20 some odd years ago, trying to make it more a natural thing and allowing it to evolve into an old growth. And uh, Hugo was still alive then, and he spoke up and said, that was not the intent behind me giving that, mm. donating that land to the town. So I guess we just want to make sure there aren't any... Well, there would be a deed or something, right? If somebody donated well, that land? Well, yeah, but I don't know if that was, not all the stuff is always articulated. We right. just want to make sure. I don't, I don't know, know how long ago that I was. I thought we bought some of that land from Stan Morse. Or he, I, I don't remember. Stan told me he sold, I think it was added to. Well, we should ask the Conservation Commission if they're working on this to they would be, want to check that be out. checking that out. We can do that. I can put that on my list of... Just make sure that there's no regulation or well, when somebody there, donated it, the land, was there any conditions? I don't know if there was an actual written encumbrance, but mm -hmm. there was an understanding of, as to what it was originally for. for. Yeah, we should and, check. That's you a good know, point. So we need to check both. Yep. Good Might point. not just be a simple deed search. Yep. I can remember um, that we did do some logging in the town forest. I don't know if we it was do the one we on, have one more than one. There's one on Pekin that we did some logging on. I know, I remember that. Is that right? Where's they, that? Pekin? Town Forest? Yeah, there's a town forest off of Pekin, I believe. I remember that in my early days of being with the select board, I can remember. Yeah. They did some logging because they talked about where the revenue was going to go. Yeah. Um, yeah, I remember that's that. That's in the early 2000s. And that was when Nick was on the Conservation Commission. Yeah. 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 Nick. I remember that. Emily? Yep. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, I remember that. Oh. Okay. Seems like I just had a flash of something else I was going to tell you guys about. Now I forgot what it was. Maybe it'll flash back. Mm -hmm. All right, minutes. <laughs> the way things go these days. Well, if um, it was that important, I'll send you an email. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, 
minutes. We have to finally, hopefully, finish the August 5th minutes. But I still have a question about them. About the truck? No, no, no. This is about the, um, the veterans exemption thing. Because oh, yeah. we specifically were, gonna, were asking Struck a question line. about um, the state and school property tax portion. And I think I understand now that if you exempt something, you got to make up everything. That way, way you understand you it. To make up the state, state education, education piece. right, right. Piece. Unless you specifically, in unless your, we adhere to the state level of exemption, there's a state well, that's, proviso. We right, that's a lesser that. amount, and we right. exceed mm -hmm. that, but that doesn't get to the issue of town tax, state education tax. I thought, okay, and I, I, I don't know this. I didn't research, but I, I, I thought that the state number was one where we didn't have to make up the education tax, but if we exceeded that... That's not my understanding. Oh, really? Because in That's... checking on a, another item that might come up for exemption this year, you would have to specifically not exempt the school portion if you gave them an exemption from the town. You, you, you can do it, you can exempt well, the you're whole not thing. Talk, that's not a veterans, I, I, but the veterans one is very specific in terms that they have an amount in the state. Yeah, see, I don't know. And, yeah, so that's... Right, I still, I'm still not clear on Sandra's answer in the minutes, so... Just put it up, we need to know this. I mean, it's good, it's, it's going to be good to have it documented in the minutes, and I'm sorry it's taking so long, but Katie specifically sent Sandra a question, but I'm she, still... She rewrote this. Right, but it still to me is not clear. In my mind, but so this she wrote the green part. Yeah, there are ten veteran or veteran survivors in the town entitled to receive veterans exemption on the property tax bill. Calus allows a forty thousand dollar exemption. This means that if a veteran's home is assessed at a hundred thousand, the tax rate is applied to sixty thousand. Right, value. that's the clarification right. we're looking for. The remaining for. assessed value is exempted from taxation to the veteran. The state of Vermont allows a veteran exemption of ten thousand because Cal's provides for an additional thirty thousand in veterans exemption. Property taxes on the thirty thousand of assessed value. Three hundred thousand. Ten veterans times thirty thousand of exempted value must be collected from the Calus tax. That's what I was saying. Yeah. The fifth fiscal year twenty veteran right. exemption right. period is that. And include it in a local agreement tax rate. But that still doesn't answer the question do the callous taxpayers pick up the town and the state share of the property taxes? No, that just, just the town, we eat it because we have a budget and there's less money going in, but it's the state piece we have to make up. Right. The state's saying, right. you, we're not authorizing you to forgive people right. the, you know, right. so a portion of the state obligation. So I guess so. I'm saying it wrong because we eat the town portion, yeah. but we still have to come up with the state portion. The state that's portion. what it says. So, so it, to me, that's still not clear. That's so it shows up <coughs> It shows up in the math. Said, said another way, I think, John, what you're saying. It shows up in the math. The state portion has to show up in the math. We have to, we have to actually... We have to hand over this money to the state. Right, whereas the town portion... We just eat it. It just because it just gets. We don't need it. In. It's just kind of baked in. It's, it's all just baked in. There. in. Yeah. Right, but that's why I was differentiating because, mm -hmm. to, in my mind, there's the town portion and then there's the state education tax, mm -hmm. and I just I think we just need a. I would like to see a little more clarification in there. So somebody picks up those minutes and reads yeah. it. It says that. Well, we could add the, the, we, the, the state education tax portion is not exempt well, or what something. Well, we could add at the end of in that second highlighted paragraph, yeah. we could add, in sum, the town remains obligated to fund uh, the state education tax. Obligated <coughs> to the state education tax associated with the $30,000 exempt. Uh, Evaluation. Or, yeah. or you could just say with the with these exempted veteran properties over 
Anything over 10,000. Anything over 10,000. Well, I'm just thinking, somebody picks up these minutes and they read them, are they going to know what that means? Right, well, that's, that's what we're clarifying. Mm -hmm. At some point, it's they're going to have to be knowledgeable. Team. They don't understand. Right. They're going to have to come in and talk. You know? Anything right. over 10,000 of assessed value for each property. In some town, which is the concern, the town remains obligated to fund the state education tax. Okay, that's fine. That's what there I'm it is. To see. Okay. That's what so I'm we got to see. we got the yeah. I think that's the really treasurer's important. language, and we important got your piece. summary clarification. Yeah, I think mean, that's important. There we go. So we don't have to delay. No, and we're done. Is that was the only thing, that's right, Katie? Oh, all right. the highlight's gone. There's nothing you can do now. It's, it's all done. <laughs> the highlight's gone. The highlight of it's my too late. life is gone. Now. All right. So with those, with that, I would make a motion to approve the November, August 8th, 5th minutes. Second. Okay. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Hearing none. Motion carries. Now we have September 23. 23, and that's it, right? Then we're up, caught up? What about the 24th? Um, the 22. Yeah, there was a yeah, there's town hall special meeting that Right. Way. I'm ready to do both. I don't know if anybody else yeah. is. Sure. You, I think, Sharon, you did some. I made one small change that I. And I, I think I you got it. absorbed. Yeah, and I think it, it was fine. It's like, somehow I, somehow it absorbed and I didn't mean for it to because I wanted everybody <laughs> to see what you did. It, it was. I clicked some button and it went away. It was, oh, no. Yeah, you click. You click a check mark and it accepts it. Yep. Um, um, if you go back, it, up, it wasn't a big deal though. No, it wasn't. It was just underscoring. Oh, I know. That's the thing I wanted to tell you. Go back one, Katie. It was underscoring the right point there around the process. Right. That was the thing I was going to update you on. I don't know. I think I forwarded to you that RCT bus thing <coughs> is not going to happen until like mid November. Yeah. That was the thing that I thought yeah. of but forgot. Yeah, we saw that. So I think that's it, right? Anybody else have anything yeah, else? Okay. Looks good. Looks good. Anybody want to move the minutes with the changes as accepted? Move to approve. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, September 24th. Um, I think I made, I did, I made a clarification, mm -hmm. and that was, that was it. So, that was the change I made that was, we know we got that $200,000 donation, but there was $20,000 in additional private donations plus another private donation of 5000 but it's only, you can only take 1000 every year for five years. Um, I think I think that was it. Yep. Anybody else have any changes to those? Mm -hmm. no? okay. Motion to approve the minutes of September twenty twelve. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none. Already. Did we, did this, we didn't approve the twenty third. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we did. We did. Yeah, you yep. said aye too. Oh, that was yeah. twenty third. Okay. Aye, aye, Captain. Um, okay, any other old business, new business? I move that we adjourn. So I can have supper. Me too, I haven't had supper either. You no, haven't either? But no, we're you're always so organized. We're adjourning to executive session. Oh, we are. Yeah. Mm. You can have more chocolate, huh?